Good morning. Jesse Allender here, registered dietitian and professional chef. Ah, I work in pediatric nutrition in the early intervention program here in Chicago. Uh, and we are home, me and my kids are home on uh, COVID-19 lockdown and um, for the next uh, 13 more days quarantine. We're all uh, relatively healthy. My daughter had a fever, so we're just making sure all our friends and family are super extra safe. I'm coming to you this morning. It is 10 after seven in the morning in Chicago. We're expecting a high temperature today of 60 degrees, I heard on the radio. Uh, and I'm making some French toast. Um, French toast is a wonderful, easy uh, breakfast, I should hope. Um, something I like to um, share with folks who are looking for uh, tasty, delicious, sweet, rich breakfast that's good for you. And the way to do that is to flip your default or switch your default. Uh, one of the things I like to talk to, especially to grown-ups um, and adults and families looking to make the healthiest choice for their families, for themselves, the way we increase the nutrition in our food is, I'm getting joined, is uh, we can increase the protein, we can increase the fiber, we can increase the Hear minerals. Me. Hear me. Say hi. 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 I'm Chew Boy. Chew Boy. All right, Chew Boy, go on and play. Um, they haven't had their breakfast yet, so we'll see how this goes. Um, switch your default. And so for French toast, that means uh, using a whole wheat bread. This is a semi whole wheat bread. Um, I made it on Friday. Um, Hala makes great French toast. Store bought Hala, it's just delicious. It's succulents. This is a rich and delicious eggy already bread. Um, so actually, one thing I do when I make French toast with like typical store bought uh, whole grain bread uh, is I add extra eggs. So I'll do like two eggs and a quarter cup of milk or cream. Um, and but today, I'm just gonna use one egg because this is an egg bread. So it's already rich in um, leptosin and choline and uh, some omega-3s because it's omega-3 eggs uh, that I use. Um, you can see it's got a yellow hint to it. It's got a tight grain on it, a little bit of bubbles, but um, so I'm gonna cut it nice and thick, make a custard and fry it up. <laughs> um, okay. Trying to get my new angle work in here. Uh, so uh, this knife is way too much, but it's the serrated knife that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice it um, with this. It's a pretty small bread, so I'm gonna make two slices for each of them. Uh, pretty, pretty thick. There we go. Uh, I store my bread in an old, uh, this is a cleaned out, dried uh, produce bag. I put it in there. I try not to have too much air in there if I'm trying to get through fresh bread. Now, of course, uh, I'm trying to get through fresh bread anytime I make it uh, before it goes stale or bad. And then I store the rest in the freezer uh, for another purpose. Um, bread pudding or tashli, take your pick. Uh, because so, if it's still there at <laughs> the high holidays, it better be thrown in the ocean. Um, <coughs> but of course, Wednesday is Pesach Passover, and we don't have bread in our house. Then uh, we're going to be doing our search for chametz probably tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, there's tons in the house because we stocked up for the lockdown. Uh, we're just going to lock it off and sell it. We'll talk about that more in fun Jewish traditions. Uh, but there's my bread. Um, and so here's my custard dish, and I'm going to go ahead and put my egg in there. Um, there's, this is my first ingredient, so it's functioning as my egg bowl, and I'm going to get my heat on my pan. I'm going to do a pretty relatively low, relatively low heat. And then I'm going to use some 2% milk. That's what I happen to have. We rotate back and forth between 2% and whole. And I am uh, actually not going to use that because um, it is a little bit sour. What was your expiration, expiration date? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Not to worry. We don't drink a lot of milk, so sometimes even a half gallon uh, will go on us. So now I have organic 
vitamin D omega-3 rich milk, which is my favorite milk to buy, the omega-3 part, because anywhere I can put omega-3s into our diet, uh, the better. So just enough to make a custard. Um, and then I'm going to um, grab the handy dandy fork that I got out ahead of time. <laughs> Um, and mix that together. So typically I would have two eggs and a little bit less milk in my custard. And then I'm going to season it. So I'm going to season it with a pinch of salt. Mama, look at me. Oh my goodness. Um, and I'm going to season it with some cinnamon. And I'm going to season it with some, these are nutmegs. I have my nutmeg grater. It's a pretty fine hole. It's got a track on there. That's not too appealing. Uh, but, uh, and I have a tiny little nub of nutmeg here. I love nutmeg. It has nutmeg on it. Uh, it doesn't fit inside. Does it fit inside the jar? I've never tried that. Let's see. It does not fit inside the jar. I should get a jar that the grinder fits inside. I think I'm going to look in my pantry because I think I have that jar. I learn something new every day. And then what I also like to do, this is a pretty sweet bread already because I put honey in the bread when I made it. But I still put uh, a dash of of uh, maple syrup, Kirkland, uh, into into my custard. And I like to get my bread nice and soggy, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. It might even all fit. Oh, no, I can only get three in. Okay. So, butter. I cook French toast in butter. My kids are yelling at each other. My daughter is going to be rollerblading in the house in a minute. This is unsalted organic butter. Uh, dairy products, I am... Uh, organic pretty much only um, I have a thing about that I always get organic beans always get organic strawberries always get organic uh, dairy products I almost always get uh, it's about 50% organic um, when I'm buying uh, store-bought bread uh, I almost only buy organic wheat flour if I'm gonna make bread at home um, some veggies you know, it depends on the how much they cost and, and the availability. Like if I need cucumbers and there's no organic cucumbers available, I'm still going to get some cucumbers. Um, so this might be too hot. Let's hope it doesn't brown too much. Ah, perfect. So my bottom is buttered and I take my remainder out, put it to the side for the next one. I have my bread here in uh, soaking up the custard. I flip it over. And one of my favorite things to do, I don't have much custard, is I like to poke my bread when I'm getting it custarded, but I don't have enough to get to that last piece, so I'm not going to poke too much. I get this into my pan, get my last piece in there, keep my heat low, and then I'm going to soak up the rest of this custard with this piece of bread. I am Miss Frugal, oops, tore out a piece of bread there, put that back in. And then when I do have leftover custard, what I do is I take it with a rubber spatula and I pour it into the nooks and crannies. So I get all of my custard into my bread. So I get all of that eggy protein 
all of that good milk and seasoning and all that sweet syrup right into my bread. <clears throat> you all right, bud? All right, Houston, we've got a problem. I'm gonna get going. So I'm frying my toast. I'm picking up my heat a little bit so it gets a nice Maillard reaction. Um, and then after a minute, I'm gonna flip it. I'm not gonna burn it because I'm gonna pay attention. <laughs> it's really important to pay attention when you're cooking. I gotta go. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks so much.